And now it is my pleasure uh, to invite our next lecturer, Professor Petar Bacic from Croatia. Professor Bacic is the head of the Department of Constitutional and Political Sciences at the University of Split, an acknowledged expert of constitutional law, European law, as well as human rights protection. The title of his presentation is Croatian Constitutional Identity and European Integration. Professor Bacic, the stage is yours. So, uh, honorable presiding, ladies and gentlemen, and dear colleagues, uh, before I go into detail with my presentation, I would just like to say a few words. First of all, let me express my sincere gratitude to organizers, uh, together with their partner institutions. My gratitude also goes to our dear Hungarian colleagues uh, for all uh, for coordinating efforts in our working group, uh, respect to Professor Andras Varga and Dr. Professor Lila Bekes. <laughs> Uh, it is an uh, honor indeed to uh, participate in work of the working group and especially uh, in this uh, conference on the important topic and thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak uh, here today. So I will focus today on question of uh, Croatian constitutional identity uh, and its relation to European integration process. Uh, my intention is to show how the elaboration of the idea of European integration and parallel process of adaptation of uh, national constitutional political system to the European political space and complex of European law also prompted Constitutional Court of the Republic of Croatia to start with development of the concept of constitutional identity. I will also try to shorten some parts uh, to stay in time limits. Uh, uh, I will try not to repeat myself uh, since we had this uh, online seminar two weeks ago. Anyway, when discussing the Croatian constitutional uh, identity concept, one should take into account that it embraces both the uh, uh, concept of constitutional identity as well as that of national identity. However, merging it uh, in a way uh, into a broader idea of Croatian constitutional identity, elements of which can be found, of course, first in the constitution and second in few quite recent decisions of the Croatian Constitutional Court. So though the notion uh, uh, of constitutional identity gained considerable popularity in case law of the Court of Justice of the EU, some national constitutional courts, uh, we shall see that the concept uh, in Croatia has until now been used rarely, uh, basically only in exceptional situations when the constitutional court was deciding on highly sensitive matters such as decision-making process, uh, or national referenda and popular initiatives, or regarding uh, rights of national minorities, or both, that is specific for Croatia. Uh, nevertheless, though at present time the concept of Croatian constitutional identity lacks very much in clarity, it lacks in precision, uh, one might say that the path is paved for its further development uh, in years to come. Also, I will try to consider Croatian constitutional identity, but just a little bit in historical perspective, at least in a uh, part that concerns relevant constitutional provisions. So the search for Croatian constitutional identity should start by the end of 1980s, beginning of 1990s, when major political changes were occurring peaceably in uh, most uh, countries of uh, Central and Eastern Europe, uh, but not, of, not all of them uh, were uh, lucky enough to experience the so-called Velvet Revolutions, so peaceful transitions to transition democracies, and the most difficult roads uh, uh, laid be ahead of countries that seceded from the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. So, Croatian constitution was adopted in 1990. Until now, it was amended in five occasions, 1997, 2000, 2001, 2010, and 2013. Uh, according to constitution, it can be amended either by parliament or by voters directly in a referendum. So both of these procedures have been uh, employed so far. Thus, in 1997, 2000, 2001, and 2010, uh, it was amended in the parliament. And of course, each of these revisions had uh, different important objectives. One constitutional change in 2013 was a result of a first national referendum to amend the constitution, carried uh, out pursuant the popular initiative uh, in accordance with the result of referendum, the definition of marriage as a union of, uh, for life between a woman and man was included in the constitution. Now, as, okay, sorry, <laughs> wrong button. 
As it regards to the concept of uh, constitutional revision, I will concentrate mainly or solely on uh, the fourth revision of 2010, because the objective of that constitutional revision was, of course, to uh, create and to strengthen the constitutional basis for Croatia's uh, full membership in the European Union as part of this process of uh, fulfilling the strategic goals of joining the Euro-Atlantic Organization's objectives, which were already proclaimed in the preamble called historical foundations uh, of the Constitution as early as in 1990 and time of its adoption. So the 2010 Constitution amendments were adopting during Croatia's EU membership negotiations, which were long. Though Croatia's path towards uh, EU started already in 2000 with opening negotiations for stabilization and uh, association agreement, uh, negotiations were officially opened in 2005 and uh, closed in 2011. Now, all changes to the constitution closely related to European integration can be divided into different groups. And uh, I will specifically refer only to constitutional amendments that establish a valid constitutional legal basis for the accession uh, and enable, of course, the uh, effective functioning of Croatia in the EU. So namely, in first group, we have to uh, mention amendments required by the accession negotiations uh, uh, that were basically adopted at the request of uh, the European negotiators in order to facilitate the accession to the EU. These are basically constitutional issues, issues that arose from individual chapters of negotiations with the European Bank, uh, State Auditing Office, independence of Central National Bank, uh, strengthening independence of judiciary, uh, of course, the European arrest warrant, we all mentioned the European arrest warrant. It's interesting maybe to mention here for Croatian case that its application was delayed until Croatia became a full member of the EU. Although the negotiators demanded its direct application even before uh, reaching full membership. Now, uh, in second group, we have constitutional issues that are not, okay, that are not directly, I won't move my finger anymore, I will stick it to this button. So uh, that are not directly uh, related to individual chapters uh, and basically refer to modalities of accession and functioning of Croatia in the EU. So this important new Title VIII of the Constitution named the European Union includes four articles and was based on the demands of legal profession of course, on the experience of other older members of the European Union, particularly those undergoing uh, transition, and was applied in full only upon reaching full membership. So in relation to other parts of the constitutional text, these provisions also brought one nomotechnical novelty, since each of them has its own separate title, as you may as you may see. So it sets forth the legal basis for membership and transfer of constitutional powers, the participation of uh, uh, government bodies in decision making within the institutions of the EU, the supremacy of EU's acquis communautaire and the rights of European citizens within the Republic of Croatia. So again, this part entered into force on the day when Croatia became a full, full member of the Union. Now, in order to further elaborate our topic, the development of Croatian constitutional identity concept, it is necessary to say a few words on provisions regulating decision-making on association and dissociation referenda that have been altered in order to abolish constitutional impediments to EU membership. So, uh, after the Declaration of Independence in 1991, uh, the process of accession to international organizations of the Republic of Croatia began, starting with the United Nations in uh, 1992, March. Then uh, a political dialogue was established between Croatia and Council of Europe, accepted in 1996. Then we joined NATO in 2009. Uh, and basically, the constitutional basis for accession to all international organizations I've just mentioned was actually provision of part of the constitution that deals with international relations. However, already 
in the original text, 1990 constitution, the part devoted to international relations was divided into two sections, into two sectors. And uh, one uh, that regulates the procedure for joining Croatia into alliances with other countries, that is, withdrawal from such an alliance. This norm was actually incorporated into the constitutional text in order to provide a constitutional basis for the holding of the 1990 independence referendum, so est uh, establishment of independent and sovereign Croatia. Uh, now, by amending constitution in 1997, the, this provision was amended in the part that refers to dissociation procedure and was supplemented by the inclus inclusion of a specific ban, it's paragraph two, uh, on joining Croatia in alliances with other states, which would actually mean the restoration of the Yugoslav State Union, basically renewal of South Slavic State Union or any form of consolidated Balkan state. So Yugoslavia, basically. Now, the constitution provision on association and dissociation was again amended in 2010, this time with the aim of creating a constitutional basis that will enable Croatia's long-awaited accession to the EU. Its current article 142, this is, this is the one. In that sense, the constitution maker, for the first time since 1990, intervened in the decision related to the referenda decision, namely the strict and actually difficult to achieve condition of obtaining the majority of votes of all voters in the country, was replaced by a solution. This is the bold one. Uh, so uh, according to which the lowest threshold of the voter turnout which at the same time guarantees the legitimacy of the referendum is determined, is determined as the majority of, vo of all voters voting in, uh, of the voters who participated in the referendum. So uh, prior to that, the consti this constitutional norm required a very strict majority, majority that for a positive outcome of the referendum, uh, it, it was majority of all voters. So you see, you see the difference. Considering that the above meant that not going to the referendum or uh, basically abstinence uh, no longer has the same effect as a vote against, this change definitely made possible for the, let's say, real will of the electorate to be expressed in the referendum. So, I will skip these parts that relate to constitution, because if we are to find or to define uh, elements of constitutional identity in the constitution, we should refer to first uh, 1990 constitution preamble, especially uh, that part which defines the Republic of Croatia as a state of Croatian citizens, but also of its national minorities. Uh, okay, that is that is one. Uh, uh, important and the other important article is uh, article one which defines Croatia as unitary and indivisible democratic welfare state in which the power derives from the people and rests with the people that's classic one so before we move further we should move further to article three of the constitution uh, this is the expression of highest values of constitutional order that in the same time constitute also a, a basis for interpretation of the constitution itself and if we are to uh, define the last one although i cannot say that it's really strictly Croatian constitutional identity, but uh, there, is a, there is a certain uh, understanding in Croatian legal theory that this norm uh, can be seen as the unviolable essence of the constitution. It's a, let's say, classic non-derogatory clause found in uh, article, article 17, a uh, norm by which uh, certain principles and their protection are put before the security and existence of the state itself undoubtedly therefore constituting its constitutional identity. So this is list of absolute rights, starting with uh, right to life. Now, I move the finger again. Okay, I have maybe two fat fingers for this. So as it regards 
the relevant case law of Croatian constitutional court, we shall see, I mean, I shall try to, to demonstrate that it's quite rare references to constitutional identity made so far were connected exactly with questions of national minorities and referenda, especially after the 2010 constitutional changes related to the EU accession referenda that we mentioned especially, should we say, exclusively referred to these questions. So the first reference to a constitutional identity in constitutional court's case law can be found in its decision from July 2011 concerning constitutional act on amendments to uh, the Constitutional Act on Rights of National Minorities, as well as act on uh, election of the representatives to the Croatian parliament. Specifically, it's article that foresaw representative seats for national minorities. Now, according to current Croatian uh, electoral system established in 1999, voters are basically divided into three categories. First, Croatian citizens who vote in 10 electoral units with electoral lists uh, consisting of 14 representatives, so it's 140. Then, so-called diaspora or Croatian citizens voters uh, who do not have registered domicile in Croatia, they are entitled to elect three representatives and they do it in the 11th electoral unit, so 140 plus three, it's 143. And then Croatian citizens who are of other nationality, in fact, persons who belong to national minorities. They vote in special 12th uh, electoral unit at national level and they are entitled to elect eight representatives. So this is 150-51. Now, uh, according to following criteria, Serbs elect three representatives, Hungarians and Italians elect one representative each, Czechs and Slovaks together elect one representative, Albanians, Bosnians, Montenegrians, and others, uh, oh sorry, Macedonians and Slovenians together elect one representative, and all other minorities uh, together elect one representative. However, the Croatian government proposed new model uh, introducing so-called positive discrimination measures, uh, measures that basically divided uh, or resulted in dividing national minorities in two groups. First, minorities that exceeded 1.5% of population, but it, in fact, it's only the Serb minority that exceeds that number, and those minority groups that constitute less than 1.5% of all population. And this is, in reality, all others, and probably will stay that way because next national minority, I think, counts for 0.5% or something like that. And they were given dual vote voting rights. Nevertheless, the Constitutional Court annulled a new electoral legislation stressing especially parts of constitutional preamble and their significance for the constitutional identity of Croatia. Namely, the court made reference exactly on paragraph two of constitutional preamble, which is, includes 22 national minorities, minorities that live in Croatia, as well as others who are its citizens and are guaranteed equal rights with uh, citizens of Croatian nationality. Now, the court insisted on a structural unity of the constitution, stating that constitution is a single whole and it cannot be examined in such a way to extract a single provision from the totality of relations established by it. The constitution has internal unity, so the meaning of any of its parts is bound to all other provisions, especially with highest values of constitutional order. Uh, the court also concluded from relevant constitution provisions that the constitution accepted the civil concept of state in which all citizens, which include members of Croatian nation and of national minorities, constitute the people. That's something I was trying to talk about on our, on our seminar. So, uh, that's the notion of we, the people, in Croatian way. Therefore, the Constitutional Court determined that the Constitution does not allow uh, the law to guarantee and determine in advance the number of guaranteed seized for any minority on any basis within the framework of the general electoral system. Second reference was made in 2013 
concerning national referendum on citizens initiative to amend the constitution whereby the definition of marriage uh, was uh, uh, introduced. And after a successful collection of signatures, the Croatian parliament called a national referendum, but without triggering the constitutional court's competence to decide on the constitutionality of the referendum question. So the court could act only if so requested by the parliament. Nevertheless, uh, the court reacted issuing a special statement or notification and basically extended its uh, review powers by stating that in spite of Parliament's move, it does not lose its general powers over constitutionality of referendum. However, it declared that out of respect for the constitutional role of Croatian Parliament as the highest legislative and representative body on, in the state, it is only permissible for the court to make use of its authority as an exception. Uh, when it establishes the formal and or substantive unconstitutionality of a render random question or a procedural error of such severity that it threatens to destroy the structural characteristic of the Croatian state, that is its constitutional identity. Again, referring to same articles one and three, including a definition of state and highest values of the constitutional order of the Republic of Croatia. Now, leaving aside the procedural aspect of the court's reasoning as the reference to substantive concept of constitutional identity is the main point of our interest, uh, let me just add that the court concluded that primary protection of values in expressed in Article 1 and 3 of the Constitution does not exclude the authority of the framer of the Constitution Parliament to expressly ex exclude some other question from the circle of permitted referendum question. And maybe that is something that is uh, that will be going on, it is going on, and maybe it will result in some constitutional amendments very recently, but let's, let's see, it's just a speculation. Now, uh, next references uh, on constitutional identity can also be found in uh, three cases connected with citizen-initiated referendum, although uh, all three unsuccessful, unlike the previous. So moreover, first of those cases, the connects question of referenda and rights of persons belonging to national minorities, uh, namely in its decision that dates in 2014 uh, and concerns the referendum to amend <clears throat> the Constitutional Act on National Minorities, specifically in parts that uh, regulates minority language rights. So the intended referendum was basically organized to prevent the government's intention to fully implement the Constitutional Act on National Minorities and to place bilingual plaques uh, in Cyrillic script uh, on public institution buildings in uh, Vukovar, so a city well known for being uh, almost completely destroyed and occupied during the war for independence. Now, the court in the end stated that rights of national minorities, use of language, use of script, guaranteed by Article 12 of the Constitution, represent universal and permanent values that define the identity of the Croatian constitutional state. And uh, other two decisions uh, date in 2015, both on citizens' initiative, one regarding the so-called outsourcing in public sector and the other concerning the monetization of Croatian motorways. In the first decision on outsourcing, the court practically repeated its uh, statement from the case that dealt with constitutional referendum on marriage, whilst in the second decision on monetization of motorways, it declared that Article 49, Paragraph 1, that is, guarantees of entrepreneurial and market freedoms, constitute the basis of economic system and must be interpreted and taken together with the Article 3, so fundamental values of the constitutional order. And therefore, it has specific uh, significance for the conception of constitutionally guaranteed rights, which again constitutes identity of Croatian constitutional state. Now, I would also like to emphasize the fact that until now, Croatian constitutional court has issued one 
general legal standpoint concerning the EU law, namely in previously mentioned 2015 decision regarding monetization of Croatian motorways, the court first established the unconstitutionality of the act in question and then concluded that it was not necessary to further review the conformity of referendum question with the EU law in substance because the constitution by its own legal force has supremacy over EU law. Now, that's all. The court did not further elaborate any of this. So it is quite interesting, and I will try to do that uh, in the article that we are preparing to question in more details what prompted the Constitutional Court to refer to EU law uh, in a case like this. Because in a case like this, actually, it was there was no need for uh, such reference. Uh, the case did not relate basically to EU law. Uh, there were no uh, strong connections with the compatibility of EU law with Croatian constitution. It was only in the written pleadings of uh, parliament. Uh, it was offered an argument by which positive decision in referendum may result in breaching fundamental freedoms of EU internal market. So was it perhaps simply an attempt by the Croatian court to engage in a constitutional dialogue with other European courts, maybe preparation for opening communication with EU Court of Justice. Uh, by the way, it should be said that the Croatian Constitutional Court has not yet referred the preliminary question to the European Court of Justice. I checked that last week because I went with my students to <laughs> visit the Constitutional Court in Zagreb. So, yes, it's it's quite fresh. So, should the should the previous reference be interpreted simply as cautious first step, as a way of creating preconditions for constitutional uh, review of EU secondary legislation in future? Let's see. And some concluding remarks. It is interesting to point out. Uh, the obvious link that in Croatian example exists between referendum decision making and European integration process regarding the involvement of constitutional court and defining of Croatian constitutional identity in general. Uh, I'll try to show that uh, precisely with the intention of ensuring the success of the referendum on accession of the EU, uh, the relevant constitutional provision was amended and the threshold required for the adoption of a positive decision was significantly lowered. Although by doing so, Croatia made it possible to achieve the desired goal, such a constitutional amendment triggered an avalanche of referendum questions or requests. At the same time, the Constitutional Court used such situation as an incentive for constructing and elaborating the Croatian constitutional identity. And to sum up, uh, the Croatian Constitution does not explicitly declare any of its parts, any of its provisions unamendable. It definitely does not contain itself the so-called eternity clause. However, the Constitutional Court determined uh, highest values and principles that represent the core of the constitutional order, in other words, that represent Croatian constitutional identity. And furthermore, in its decision of 2017, court explicitly stated that constitutional principles determine the structure and essence of the Croatian state. The Republic of Croatia can remain what it is only if none of the structural constitutional principles are abolished or changed. So altogether, such constitutional interpretation allows the Constitutional Court, though only exceptionally, to monitor the substantive constitutionality of constitutional amendments in cases when such amendments disrupt the structural core of the Croatian state, that is, its constitutional identity, including especially fundamental values of the constitutional order. These values, of course, represent a broad principles, uh, uh, sometimes with very vague meaning, and the whole concept of constitutional identity uh, must be inevitably further elaborated, but maybe it might be used in future for imposing limits on further European integration and for constitutional review of EU law. Thanks. <laughs>